Did you know that you can make a coffin nail from almost any shape that you already have? But with coffin nails, you've got to have a plan. It can go sideways very quickly. I'm wearing this dark gel color, so when the file hits the nail, you'll see exactly where I'm filing. It's a great visual aid. I'm gonna break it down for you. Let's get started. Okay, so let's start with the square shape. Let's say you already have a square shaped nail. Even if it's grown out for three weeks or so and you're doing a fill and you don't have to take it all off and rebuild. Now rebuilding a coffin nail from scratch for a new set is a whole other video. This is already if you have an existed shape on there already. And so we're gonna start with the square. What you wanna do is find the center point. The reason why they can go when you're trying to file a coffin, it can go sideways so quick is because when you start filing the side, if you go too far or not enough, it really sets you off. Believe me, I've been there, I've done that. So what I learned to do was find my center point first. So I've already painted these nails. I painted them a dark color so you can see when I'm filing. I'll do this in my mind, but I'm gonna draw this on the nail now. I need to find the exact center point from my, my cuticle, my skin, point right there, and draw a line in my mind. I do this in my mind all the way down here to find where that middle point is. Then, and I do this in my mind, but I'm gonna draw it on here for you because you can't read my mind. <laughs> so then I'm gonna draw from my middle of my cuticle all the way down to that center point. So I know exactly where the center of my nail is, okay? Now with a coffin, you're doing a long, this is a longer coffin. Now there's really long coffins. It's easier to get a coffin look with a longer nail and much harder with a shorter nail because you've got to go in much quicker. So what I do with a coffin is sort of figure out how wide do you want that end of your coffin? So the very end of the nail, how wide? So do you want it, I'll say to my clients, do you want a very coffiny? <laughs> Meaning, do you want it really narrow? So if you want a narrow end to come from the cuticle free edge, from the cuticle and your free edge, to the narrowness of that, you gotta determine how narrow this is going to be. Now, if it's a short, narrow nail, if it's really narrow, that's gonna be a strong, that might be too much. So the longer it is, the more narrow you can go and it still looks very elegant. So we're gonna decide here, how narrow do we want that end piece to be? So let's say we want it on the fairly narrowish side. So I'm gonna sort of divide that section in half and I kind of want it to be there. So when I draw that, what I'm saying is I want my coffin width to be in this area here, okay? That's the white end on here, that's how wide I want my coffin to be. So where I would mess up my coffins is the side parts. That's where I kind of got a little off with them. Sort of in here was my question is, where do I start that? Well, you can't make it any more narrower back here because that's the width of your nail. And you don't want to make it wider out here because it's going to look really bad. So take where your free edge begins. Free edge is where the nail is not attached to your finger anymore. That's where the free edge begins. So for me on here, I'm gonna feel, and it's right in here, okay? But you wanna match that on either side because if you don't, that's when your coffin is gonna really get off. So I'm gonna match it on this side and I'm just gonna draw a dot. That's where my sides are. Looks like a mess, doesn't it? <laughs> so this is where I want the coffin to start tapering. It's also a tapered square, really. We never really did a lot of tapered square years ago. We just did square or oval or round. That's pretty much what we did. And now we've got coffin and tapered squared and ballerinas and which are basically the same. So you wanna take this line here. Remember where we want it to end up? We're gonna draw a straight line from there, from your free edge to there. Okay, and I'm gonna turn the finger so I can be more accurate. We're gonna draw like that edge right there to here. We're gonna draw a straight line from there to there, okay? So that's basically our coffin that we've, we've sculpted in there. We've drawn in there. So I'm gonna nuke that on there <laughs> just so we actually have that a bit of a guidance. So it seems easy enough, right? Just draw a line, you file it, but the filing, 
really is the trick because you can file those sides. I'll show you. It can get really because it's 3D. It's not just a matter of taking off those sides. It affects the whole nail. Like I say, when you are sculpting from an already existing set, it's different than sculpting a coffin right from scratch. That's a whole other video. Okay, so that's on there and we are going to file. Now, it is really, really important on the kind of files that you have. Now, you want a coarse file around 150, somewhere in there. Um, 180 might work, it's a little softer, but you do want a strong sculpting file. And a good set of files is worth its weight in gold. Um, if you get a set from the store and it's not doing it for you, it's probably because it's not a profile. And it does make a huge difference. Medium or fine is not going to work for this. You do want a heavier grip because you're sculpting at this point. We're taking stuff off. So here's what I want to take off, up to that white line, okay? So you've got to get your file in there. And this is where if you don't mark it, it can be trouble. Because if you file too much, you've gone too far. And then it's like you have to go compensate for it on this side. And then you're going to end up with way too narrow. And then the whole thing is messed up. When you're working with nails, we're working in a very, very small area, a very small canvas. So when you make an error, it, it's like huge. You can see it so much greater. And that's why it can be so frustrating because you're so close. You, know, you feel like you're doing it all right, but just that one little too much or not enough makes a huge difference. Okay, so remember I said that you know, taking that away, that's only part of it. You think it's easy, you just take those sides away and you've got your coffin. Mm -mm, doesn't work that way. That's why if you're trying it and you're doing what you're seeing and it ain't working, that's because there's more to it than that. Okay, so you can see I took away, I got that line there and I pretty much took that away, right? Now I'm going to do the same on this side. So I'm going to do the other side, but if you look at this side, I'm just going to show you this while we're here. Do you see how that's come down there like that? That's interfering with our... So I've taken this away, but there's still this part here, right? We're going to contend with that. So this side, I still have to take away this section here. So I am going to file awkwardly. It is easier when you are doing somebody else. Okay, so I'm getting down to that line. But as you can see, when you look down there, see that kind of droop down there? We want to get rid of that. When I do my square, I pinch the form pretty good and it, it's very, very curvy. My nails are actually quite curvy. They're not flat. If they're flat, then the nail will come out flatter. But these are, you know, round that way. But I'm going to take my file because I want to get rid of that. But what I have to be very careful of is that I don't interfere with the where this is. If I file into that, I'm ruining now the end of where it's to go. And I need to get right up into the side there. I'm going to use my file taking away that droop. And I'm going to do that on both sides, okay? Okay. Now what I have, basically, is a fat coffin. <laughs> what we want is our coffin to be, as soon as it comes off that free edge, and there's, I'll go this way for you so you can see better, there's the end, we want it to be, and as soon as it comes off the free edge, it's got to go tapered in like that. It can't be bowing like this, so it can't be kind of roundish to the coffin end. It has to be sharp. And that's the beauty of a coffin, and that's the frustrating part as well. So, how do we get there? We fine-tune it from here on in. We are now fine-tuning it a little bit finer and crisping it up. So even though you may crisp the sides, you still may look at it and go, why does it look so bulgy fat still? That's because it's the top side. Your sides may be in there where it's supposed to be, but the top side, this part when you look down, is too bulky. So it's actually brimming over, almost like a muffin top. You know, the bottom part of a muffin is smaller. And if you look at it from the top, you can't see the bottom part where it's coming under. That's what we're doing here, is we need to see that bottom part to give it that crisper edge. So the muffin part of the top, we need to shave off the sides of the muffin when you look at it down this way. It's the same thing. So when you're looking down at that nail, you're seeing the top of the muffin. <laughs> we want to be able to see the bottom part, but you have to take the top down. And that's what we need to do. So now we need to shave off the top side. And yes, we're going to take away the line because it was on top of the gel. And I did that so you could see where I'm filing, right? So right now you can see exactly where my file is filed. 
and I am going to try to soften and take away what's on the top of the muffin there on that side. That's what I need to get rid of. Okay, so by attacking the top side, that top side of the muffin I talked about, look, I hope you can see this. Look how much straighter this side is in comparison to this side. This side is like bulbing, like it looks pregnant. <laughs> it's the top part of the muffin that you're looking down on top of. You can really see it, right? And this is nice and straight. It's also, if you take that muffin and turn it sideways, like put the base of the muffin on the, on the table, you can see the bottom of it, but you can see how the overlap that's how they got muffin top, is overlapping over top of that bottom part. You can't see the bottom part. That's what's happening here. So by the time I took off the top part, I could see the straight part that's underneath. And that took me some time to learn. I wish I had somebody to tell me that lickety split. And I would have figured that out, but it took me a while to figure that out. And once I did, it was like, okay, I'm getting this. I figured that out about 25 years ago. Okay. So I'm going to do the same for the opposite side. And that's what can mess you up as far as a coffin goes, okay? So I am now going to attack the top side on the other side. And you can look down it too, and that'll give you the indication because you'll when you look down it, that's like looking at the muffin from the sideways to see the little skinny bottom, and then you see the overtop. You're taking away the overtop, okay? And if you look down it, you can see exactly what needs to be taken away, okay? So now I've got myself a coffin. You can't see it so much because we need to paint that so you can really, really see it, right? But that is now my coffin. That's looking pretty good. I like that. Okay, so that looks like a mess, but when I paint that, you will see the fine coffin shape will come to life. Now, what if you have an almond? Well, an almond is almost there for you. You just have to take away the tip part because we have to make it blunt. So on the almond, that's exactly what we're going to do. We are going to file that tip and you sort of have to determine your length, but you want to file right down to wherever you want the length to be. But you can see it shaping up. That is the end, right? That's the end of a coffin right there. So in my mind, I've got the end here, right? Now I have to go to this side to that end. I like the end where it is there. That's good. Now I just have to take this part, not the end, but this part in here is too bulky. So I'm going to try to take that on the side just visually when I when I see it just straight up and down. And I don't know if you can see that. That looks quite a bit better. It looks quite a bit straighter. And I'll do the same on this side. Again, I'm not filing this side because that's determined. I like where that is. I'm just filing this part. I'm just filing in here. So it's very precise where you put in that file. And that's why it's important to have a really good file because you could do it with a fine, but it's gonna take you well, maybe four or five times longer. And it, you may not actually quite get there. Well, I guess you would eventually. Okay, but then also the top side. You want to be able to file it. Because I look down there, it is the shape I want, but it's coming up like this like that back to that muffin top. I'm going to use that. And so now I'm going to file the sides again. I'm taking away that top side. And I'm going to do that on both sides. Yeah, that's looking good. So I'm going to take my little duster here and I'm going to wipe it away completely. And you can see how nice and coffiny that is. Is that new? Oh, the duster! Yeah. Isn't that cute? My new little dusters. Yeah, so you can you can totally see how nice and, and you'll see that better, of course, right now. It looks ridiculous <laughs> because I got a little color. But I wanted to keep that gel on there to show you exactly where I'm filing because all this is nude, more or less, and it's really hard to see. Okay, what happens if you have a little guy? Sometimes I'll have a client that'll come in and say, uh, can I have a short coffin? Well, my first thought was, it's like... That's what a coffin is, is you need the length. Somebody will say, I want a short stiletto. A stiletto is the length. If you're going to make it short, it's not a stiletto anymore. So you want to try to give the client what they want. So you try to work with it. How can you make a short coffin? And it's really just a tiny version. It's not really a coffin. To me, it is the length of it. But you can do just exactly the same thing. And I won't cure this, but I'll show you. So again... Take that 
edge. Do it from the center. Draw a line there for yourself. And now I'm going to go, now my free edge is here. First I have to determine, I'm going to make it about here, I suppose. And here. Hopefully you can see that. Sometimes it's hard with the reflection of the lights. I should have done a matte polish, right? Duh. So what we want to do is take off this little corner, right? We're going to take off that whole little corner. That's what we're going to do. But I'm going to do this because <laughs> I'm going to gum up my file. So I'm just going to take, see that, right, that little corner? You just make sure that you don't go too far. But I just want to make a little coffin. And this is where it gets into the tapered square look, too. That's exactly what it is, is a tapered square. Uh, to me, they're the same thing. Okay, so that's round. It's about where I want it to be, but man, it sure looks fat. Doesn't look very coffin-y to me. So again, we're getting back to that top side. Oh, the bottom part too. You can take that in. That'll help. And then I'm going to go on the top side. Okay. You know, you go through all that work to build that nail. No matter how good you are with your liquid and powder, now you've got to shape it. Shaping is everything. No matter how beautifully you built it, if you don't get the shaping or the finishing, it cannot do what you want. But you can finish. You can do beautiful finishing and filing on a not-so-great nail <laughs> that's not applied so great. Even if your liquid-to-powder ratio is off, you could still finish it and make it look great. But it might not hold up very good because the liquid to powder ratio is off and you might have some surface breakdown, cracks, breaks, lifting. So shaping is like, ooh, it's, it's just huge. It's all very, very important. All the steps of the nails that we're doing is all really, really important. It makes a huge difference, the outcome. Okay, so I'm, I'm taking off the top side of that muffin. And it is, it is a very, very tiny little coffin. <laughs> That's what we have, is a tiny little coffin. Now again, hard to see right now until I get some polish on there. But you can see, look at that, we made all three coffins out of an almond, out of a long square, and out of a short square. I'll go ahead and finish the pinky. And I do want to remind you what I put this here for. Often I forget. <laughs> Many people have asked me, Susie, where have you been? I'm always here. We upload once a week. But if you don't hit that button, subscribe with the little bell, you don't get notified. So just do that when you get a sec. Okay, so then I'm going to just buff all these guys up. And then I'm going to do this little guy. So I'm going to go ahead and finish them. I'm going to polish them. And take a look at the before pictures, how we changed all three shapes, all four nails, into coffin quite easily, just with a few good files and some great pro tips. Take a look. So terrible. I always forget to mention my apron. I put the pocket up front so it's easy to have accessible stuff. This color could not be more pretty. I could not love it more. So now that we've learned some pro tips on how to file and shape coffin, I'm going to show you some tips on how to build with real flowers. A coffin shape. Check it out.